Hi everyone. To err is human. There's nothing wrong about making mistakes from time to time. Unless, of course, we're talking about some kind of oops near a nuclear reactor. Yes, some mistakes are too expensive, and we're going to tell you about all of them today. Let's get it on. New SNCF Trains Do you know what an unsuccessful investment is? Well, the French national railway company known as the SNCF is an expert in this matter. In 2014, the company, together with the railway operator network RFF, purchased 341 passenger trains with a total cost of about $17.5 billion. They were doing it for a good reason, to upgrade the transport network making it as modern as possible and more convenient for the passengers. The new trains were going to start operating in 2016, but something went wrong. Due to inaccuracy in the calculations, all the trains were too wide for the railway station platforms in France. 20 centimeters too wide, to be precise. To remake the 1,300 platforms with edges located too close to the rails and not designed for the dimensions of the new cars, the SNCF was forced to spend an additional $60 million. But how could this happen? Well, the RFF spokesman said that the shortcoming was noticed too late. Wow. And all because the dimensions were taken from the platforms constructed in the last three decades, and nobody thought about the old stations. Baltic Ace Large ships are used to deliver large loads, like cars across the ocean. The Baltic Ace was a car transporter built at a shipyard in Gdynia, Poland, on July 11, 2007. The vessel sailed under the colors of Bahamas and surely would keep transporting cars until today if it weren't for a fatal accident. On December 5, 2012, around 1915 local time, the Baltic Ace was moving with a cargo of 1,417 cars, mostly Mitsubishi from the Japanese and Thai plants, 65 sea miles away from the province of Zealand. It was here on the high seas that the ship collided with the Cypriot container ship the Corvus J and got a hole in it. A few minutes later, it tilted, capsized, and quickly sank. At the same time, the container ship the Corvus J stayed afloat and took aboard the survivors of the sunken vessel. Of course, it was impossible to save the cars, so almost one and a half thousand new cars just sank along with the ship. Later, the Baltic Ace and the cars were raised to the surface, but the seawater and time did their job. The expensive vessel and its cargo turned into useless scrap metal. Hubble Mirror Imagine this, you're building a huge space observatory, spending lots of money and time on it, and here's the long-awaited launch. Yay! The telescope is put into orbit, and now it will be possible to properly see all the distant galaxies, make beautiful pictures, and provide humanity with information for research, and some really cool desktop wallpapers as well. This is probably what the creators of the Hubble telescope thought, but already in the first working weeks of the device, it turns out that the sharpness of the images was, frankly, very far from ideal. After analyzing the pictures, the scientists realized that the source of the problems was the wrong shape of the main mirror. Despite the fact that it was perhaps the most accurately calculated mirror ever created, it was made too flat at the edges. The difference was only two micrometers, but in such a complex matter as space research, this turned out to be a real problem. Sending the Hubble back to Earth would be too expensive and take too much time and replacing the mirror was simply unreal. That's why scientists invented a new set of glasses for the telescope. They were delivered and installed by a separate expedition in one of the most complicated operations in the history of space exploration. Piper Alpha Explosion The Piper Alpha oil rig was built in 1975, and later it was re-equipped for gas production. On July 6, 1988, as a result of a gas leakage and unreasonable actions of personnel, a major catastrophe in the history of this industry happened. When it was necessary to stop, the operator decided to continue extracting oil and gas during the construction of new levels of the platform, which led to an explosion. The explosion which triggered the fire occurred early in the morning, and the fire spread so quickly that the staff didn't even have time to send a signal for help. 
Around the morning, the platform in flames was noticed by the command of the auxiliary vessel the Lowland Cavalier, and they reported the accident to the shore. Piper Alpha was completely destroyed within a few hours, and all insured losses at the company amounted to about $3.4 billion. Lake Pineur Disaster in the state of Louisiana, USA, not far from New Iberia, there's a lake known as Lake Pineur. Until 1980, it was a freshwater reservoir, popular with local holidaymakers as a place for swimming and fishing. In the middle of the small lake, there was an islet with a beautiful botanical garden. But everything changed, literally in one day. On November the 20th, 1980, drillers from the corporation of the Wilson brothers were carrying out exploratory drilling work at the bottom of the reservoir. They were looking for oil for Texaco Oil and Gas Company. Under the lake itself was a salt mine, a network of tunnels, 24 meters long and 30 meters wide. Its ceiling was placed on the salt pillars. The mine was the property of Diamond Crystal Salt Company. You probably already know what happened. So the drillers got a bit carried away, accidentally broke through the roof of the mine, and water poured right into it. It quickly washed out the 35 centimeter hole, as a result of which a giant whirlpool appeared on the surface of Lake Pineur, reaching 55 meters in diameter. This whirlpool sucked the tug, the drill drilling rig, 11 barges, the dock, houses, trucks, and even the island along with the garden. In three hours, more than 13 billion liters of water got out of the lake. But the story didn't even end there. The fact is that the water entered the tunnels very quickly, outrunning the outgoing air. And as a result, a 120-meter geyser consisting of water and rock shot up from the lake. Surprisingly, no one was injured during the disaster, but the ecosystem of the lake changed beyond recognition. The company owning the salt mine sued the drillers, and the local residents sued both of them. As a result, the company customer Texaco and the contractor Wilson Brothers had to pay $32 million for the destroyed mine, and $12.8 million to the local community for the environmental damage caused. Way Too Big Submarine the S-81 Isaac Peril submarine should have become one of the best ships of the Spanish Navy. But during the process of construction, the people involved noticed that the S-81 Isaac Peril was not only impressive on the outside, but also 68 tons heavier than the engineers assumed. So much heavier that it might just not float to the surface. Moreover, it can fall down to the bottom of the sea. To save the project, which cost a lot of money, the creators decided to increase the air of the hull to somehow distribute the weight. The length of the submarine was increased to 71 meters, but this decision not only entailed additional costs, it turned out to be quite difficult in terms of technology. The construction of the boat, which began in 2005, continues to this day. It's expected that the $1.5 billion ship will become a part of the Spanish fleet in 2022. Walkie Talkie when the walkie-talkie skyscraper was built in London, it stood out among other high buildings for its unusual mirror design and a shape that resembles a walkie-talkie. But soon, people realized that the southern side of the building reflected the sunbeams, literally burning out on a 30-meter-long area like a huge lens. The concentrated light beam reached a temperature of almost 70 degrees Celsius, an absolute record in natural conditions. The air doesn't reach that temperature anywhere on Earth. The skyscraper became even more famous when a car owner inadvertently parked his Jaguar on the southern side of the walkie-talkie. Imagine the surprise of the businessman when he came back and saw his favorite car melting down. Oh, my oh, what? Not exactly what you expect to find in the parking lot. However, the car was not the only victim. The skyscraper can easily melt all sorts of objects on the street. Cars, bicycles, furniture in a new cafe down the street. To stop this mayhem, a sun visor was attached to the building, which protects people near the walkie-talkie from the solar beam. But the strangest thing is that the creators of this expensive building, which cost about $260 million, somehow didn't think that it would turn into a Death Star. Selling Alaska It might sound surprising, 
But Alaska didn't always belong to the United States. The first people from the Old World who set foot on this land back in 1732 were Russian researchers. The area owned by Russia at the time of sale was 1,518,800 square kilometers in size and was practically unexplored. At the beginning of the 19th century, Alaska brought income through fur trading, but soon the costs began to outweigh the benefits. In addition, the region was too far from the rest of the country and therefore more vulnerable to an invasion. In the end, in 1867, Russia decided to sell this land to the US. The price of the deal was $7.2 million, less than the cost of the three-story building of the New York court, built at the same time. Given the roughly equal value of the ruble and the dollar at that time, it wasn't a great deal for the Russians. Moreover, the resources found later in Alaska became a real treasure, which ended up in the hands of the US. In this place, you can find gold, non-ferrous metals, coal, and oil. We can't even begin to imagine the amount of money that Russia lost by giving up Alaska. Millennium Bridge Let's visit London one last time. In 1999, the construction of a pedestrian bridge across the Thames began. It was known as the Millennium Bridge, and more than $24 million was spent on the construction. On June the 10th, 2002, the bridge was solemnly opened in the presence of Queen Elizabeth II of England, and on that day, about 100,000 people walked across it. But if everything went well, the Millennium Bridge would not be on our list, right? Yes, while the joyful Londoners and guests of the capital walked along the bridge, it turned out the construction was not as strong as the architects thought. The resonance of the steps made the bridge swing from side to side, so strongly that you could not only feel it, but also see it from a side. First, the authorities used a simple method to fix the problem. They put a limit of the number of people that could simultaneously pass through the bridge. But this created huge queues at the entrance of the bridge. In the end, the millennium was closed for reconstruction only two days after the grand opening. To make the bridge more resistant, London had to spend an additional six and a half million dollars. At least Death Eaters aren't the problem anymore, right? Amazing gadgets, upcoming technologies, incredible inventions, and other cool stuff related to high tech on TechZone. Subscribe, you won't regret it. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.